All right, today I am joined by Bruce Wayne of Goth. Wait, never mind. Check that. I am joined <laughs> by Matt Tyre, the founder of the Competitive Corner, a CI consultancy specializing in data protection, cloud, and cyber security. And Matt was the former head of competitive intelligence at Combo. And in case you didn't know, he is known as the Batman of Compete <laughs> as well. Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Adam. Maybe uh, at the end you can get me to do the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. We'll see if we got time. So, yeah, yeah we talked two years ago or so at Intellicon. So excited to have you back. I mean, the work you did over at Commvault was really impressive. A couple of the things as well. Nailed the tactical side. We always talk about the tactical strategic side. Your reps win rates 50% higher when the CI team was engaged. And on the strategic side, you're serving the executive team, you're delivering them a competitive intelligence newsletter or Intel Digest, which we call it here at Clue, which is what we're getting into today. Yep. So Matt, first things first, we love to kind of kick off the podcast with three tactical tips for our guests. And since this is the start of a little mini series we're doing, diving into all things competitive Intel newsletters, what are the three tips you have for folks writing their first Intel Digest? Okay, um, so three tips that I have for making a newsletter or competitive digest that uh, that I think works well is you know first of all you want to be consistent and you know in terms of how you're formatting things, how you're presenting it, when you're sending it out. You know you don't want things getting sent out on a Monday, one week, on a Thursday, the next week. So just be consistent so that your audience can know what to expect, you know, how to expect it and where and when uh, to expect it. So especially with the formatting is the most important thing with CI I find is if your users can find what they're looking for. So if you have a consistent structure to your newsletter, they know, okay, well, I, I know the section I'm, I uh, tend to look at the most is here. So I go and jump in there. Um, so that would be tip one. Uh, the next one is, and, and is really making sure that, you know, if you're leveraging the, the digest, uh, from clue or from other uh, tools, uh, or if you're building it yourself, um, whatever you happen to be sending out, make sure that there is kind of that, why your audience should care note, uh, in there. So don't just send out, well, here's what happened and, and a link to the article and just the article and maybe a summary. Uh, but, you know, include a little bit of context, you know, why did you, uh, as you know, the CI lead or, you know, whoever, uh, you are in the organization, but as a one sending out the newsletter, why do your audience members care about that particular piece of news or that article or that announcement, uh, that uh, you happen to be linking to, uh, and last one, you know, this is a, a little bit more personal is kind of, you know, branding it, you know, make it your own, you know, have some fun with it, uh, come up with. Uh, something, you, you know, that speaks to your personality, uh, you know, and the personality of your audience so that, you know, um, you know, it's, it's not just another email, for example, that gets lost in, uh, in the stack. Uh, it gets to stand out. It gets to be something that, uh, that your audience, uh, looks for and looks forward to. How did you brand yours then? I called mine the, uh, competitive market minute. Uh, when I was at Commvault, and I'm still coming up with a name for uh, the for what I'm going to call it at the competitive corner. Um, you know, I've got a few blogs uh, that I'm writing right now, so we'll see we'll see where that lands. <laughs> From uh, so the, the 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 one you mentioned off top there, like kind of consistency right. in both format, cadence. Uh, what are some of the pieces? Let's let's dive into that a little bit uh, sure. in terms of like that structure. What are some of your go to sections? that you're repeatedly putting into a newsletter mm -hmm. and maybe some of the other ones that you're looking at, a, like they come in on occasion, like what are you kind of picking and pulling from that you've seen resonate with your audience? Right. So, um, I would typically have kind of a lead in, you know, kind of just here's an overview of the bigger things that happened in the week. You know, maybe there was a, a big conference or maybe there was a series of announcements. Uh, so just kind of, you know, a level set, you know, here's, the big things that happened this week, uh, you know, here's how we responded to them. If there was a response needed, or here's what you need to think about, uh, relative to that. And then I would kind of have uh, just a breakdown of these are the articles that we're covering off and just kind of a one liner on them. 
simply to, just to kind of bring all the relevant information up to the top so that, you know, if somebody's only going to be glancing, just, you know, just taking a peek at it, uh, they can kind of see what's going to be included in it. You know, is there, uh, you know, a piece of news or an article that pops for them uh, that makes them want to jump in and uh, dig further? Uh, you know, or is it kind of just more, you know, for your information type uh, type things for that particular reader? Uh, so for me, one my, you know, the most important section was that top part, making sure that all the important information was up there. Uh, you know, because to be frank, sometimes people are only reading that first little bit. Um, you know, and, and then figure out, oh, okay, there's there's more in here that I actually do care about. Further down, I would have uh, the more verbose section where I would have each um, article linked, uh, you know, have a section around why this article was important and a short summary of the article itself so that you kind of, if you wanted to kind of expand the information a little bit, you could see, okay, well, this happened, here's why I care, here's what we're doing about it, or here's what I can say about it if it was something you know positioning wise or something that would come up in conversation and then you know a link to the original emails kind of the, to source it there so that you know if you did want to dive even further in you know you had the original article you could go and reference. so kind of a you know a tiering in terms of the level of depth and information you're getting so that uh, you know if you wanted to, to learn all you could about that particular topic you could dive in and uh, and learn more um so that was kind of the the formatting side of things. So the se- so just to close out the the sections would be kind of that nice overview section, you know, and then the, uh, the more verbose breakdown on the individual articles. It's it's fun talking to to folks about this because there is a lot of like copywriting elements that myself and on a content side is like well you mentioned that, like don't bury the lead. We're right. not you're not teasing people all the way through. Like get to the meaty stuff right away. Don't bury the lead. I think that's like a really important yeah. um, point you make. And then if people want to dig more, they can dig more, making it as accessible as possible. Do you remember during your time building uh, these digests, do you remember one in particular that was extremely popular or maybe a recurring section that you were like, oh yeah, this is what people, this is something that is of most value to my audience to include on a regular basis. Well, that was kind of really where uh, landing on the why we care part, uh, you know, on the main articles, you know, in the more verbose part. Um, and also it helped me kind of tune that opening overview as well, was don't just state the facts. Uh, and I mm-hmm. think this may have been on one of your other podcasts. Uh, you know, don't, don't just give bullets or facts. You know, tell the story. You know, uh, what are, you know, why is this relevant? Uh, what happened? Why do I care? Um, and, and so where there would be what I'd call, you know, trigger events where like maybe it was a major announcement or an acquisition mm-hmm. or, or something like that. Uh, those are the, the times where we tended to see the follow up where I would get, you know, engagement coming back in where, you know, maybe an executive or a sales leader would reach back and be like, OK, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about what happened or, you know, what we need to just have. Uh, a bit more of a brief on this because uh, sometimes it would lead to much deeper dives or follow-up meetings and stuff like that depending on the nature of it uh, so that's where kind of understanding what your audience needs to hear and being able to mm-hmm. like you said provide that front and center so they can very quickly jump in is this relevant to me do i need to know more and if so how do i find that additional information so one of the things you've mentioned there is kind of knowing your audience and what they need to know. Uh, when we were talking offline, specifically, I think there are folks that deliver org-wide mm-hmm. newsletters and updates. And then there are also um, pieces where you're, you're building a digest for a specific audience. What a rep needs to know is different to what your CEO needs to know or your product right. team. or so. With that said, you actually built a exec specific newsletter yeah. too. So I'd love to know sort of some of the differences between what an org wide newsletter would look like and mm-hmm. what you're building that's specific for executives. So it tended to be a little bit more curated even further. Um, in mm-hmm. my broader newsletters, I would provide, you know, a lot more kind of, hey, this is neat to know, this is interesting, you know, maybe some, uh, you know, relevant adjacent news kind of thing it's like you know this isn't 
directly involved in in anything that we do but hey it was really really cool like you know here's a new article on you know this new technology coming out if you're interested um so you know when tuning it for the the leadership and the executive team it was really about kind of culling that down into what really is important for us as a company for us in the market uh and you know the overall competitive landscape so just you know, maybe tuning out some of those um, less relevant, you know, hey, this is neat uh, articles and really sticking it to what are the, the three or four big things that happened this week? And, you know, sometimes there was nothing, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and that would be where um, in that overview, that lead in section, you would maybe talk about um, connecting into previous digest where it's like hey this happened last week and here's what we plan on doing about it and now you're in the following week and it's like by the way uh there wasn't really any big news this this week but referring back to last week's articles about this here's what we've done since that event happened you know you know we did an enablement session or we refreshed Mm -hmm. the battle cards or you know we kicked off this new uh this new campaign or something like that so that you can kind of provide that continuity of if there were follow-up actions from the previous week you can you know if there's nothing to talk about you can you know very briefly just you know here are some of the things and maybe lead into um upcoming events too it's like nothing happened this week however everybody's having uh their big conferences next week so we expect to see these announcements or we expect to hear uh about this release or something like that so um you know you still keep with the cadence in terms of you know even if there was no news um but you would just kind of really shrink it down to you know th- this is what's coming up or, or this is how we followed up on on those previous things but, yeah. yeah i i like the idea even if there's not anything new keeping the canes you need the consistency you need to de- that's part of developing a brand too is to be the th- the thing that shows up in the inbox at this time with this kind of branding like that is it gets i think it gets overlooked oftentimes and even if there isn't anything that's earth shattering Mm -hmm. you could there's still a lot of value that the stuff you're working on um things that could be coming up recapping things that happen and what if what has changed since or what we've done in response there's there's always there's always meat on the bone that you can dig more into one thing that stood out to me as you were talking there about execs is you're you're even you're being even more diligent with cutting the fluff for lack of a better right. word really dialed into like what matters most to them and what matters most to the business without getting into specifics what kind of pieces would be the most important in that in 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 something that's just for the executives like are we talking are you talking specific deals like maybe some big big accounts that are in progress or that were won or lost? Are you talking M&A? Are you talking like industry events? Like what are the things that execs, in your opinion, execs need to know about in a competitive Intel newsletter? Um, so they like to know if there's been any major executive changes in the, in the market. So maybe, mm. you know, competitor A has a new uh, CRO or maybe you know, this uh, v- uh, VP of product lead uh, left that company and he's gone somewhere else. So, you know, they Why like do they to want know- to know that. Well, you know, understanding, you know, a company's direction and strategy, uh, you know, can s- very often be tied into, well, who's running the ship. Um, and so understanding, you know, maybe that one individual wasn't important, but if that's the third or fourth um you know, a leader that's left or been transitioned from that company, maybe it signifies there's something else going on. Maybe, you know, there's a, a changing of the guard or maybe there's a changing of direction or maybe there's trouble inside. So it kind of opens the door for further analysis in terms of, uh, you know, that event and then the, the larger events as well. And that, again, is something that you can link to in your overview section. It's like, you know, so-and-so left this company. They're the third leader to leave in the past two quarters we think this, you know, so, Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's always one, obviously, uh, you know, any kind of M&A activity is always, uh, important to understand, uh, knowing about, uh, any announcements like, uh, you know, uh, earnings announcements, uh, you know, we, though we typically wouldn't dive into the details there as, uh, there were other individuals that would do the deep dives. 
uh, on the finances, but uh, at least knowing, you know, hey, their earnings release is coming next week, or hey, they're releasing a major product uh, today, or even big partnerships. So it's kind of the more the big ticket, you know, things where it's like, do we need to react? Do we not re- need to react? Uh, type of uh, type of things, just so that they last thing that they want is to step into a conversation and they don't know mm-hmm. that this yeah. big thing happened. You know, so uh, it's it, it's really working on that, making sure that they have that level of awareness. So, my a follow up to that then is when there's big ticket items, you you're not going to be able to dive into the nuances of a new acquisition within the confines of a newsletter, right? right? Uh, and likewise with a brand new partnership or a, or a new product release like that you can't expect to deliver everything and expect an exec to consume everything no. all within this newsletter format so what's like the follow-up process or the cadence look like after the fact because i think a newsletter like you've mentioned having this cadence delivering information to execs is a great way to build this relationship so many people I've spoken to so many people kicking off and can be like, how do I build a relationship with my execs? How do I engage them? And I think what you're talking about here is a great way to kind of extend the olive branch and build that bridge. But what next? For example, if an acquisition happens, are there follow-up meetings? Are there consistent um, things where you're recapping that happens in the newsletter outside the newsletter? Like, what does that look like? So sometimes it manifests in terms of just a direct reach out where, you know, maybe one of the leaders was like, you know what, this is kind of, something I was chewing on and they'll reach back out. Hey, you know, let's have a discussion or, you know, where can I get some more information? Um, other times they, yeah, I'll use an example that's very relevant uh, to this particular, at the time we we're recording mm-hmm. is, you know, for example, the Gartner magic quadrant for data protection was just released, uh, earlier today. Um, you know, so obviously in the newsletter, we would be covering off, Hey, this came out here's, you know, just a, a overview of, of uh, positions and, and our thoughts on it. Uh, but typically for stuff like that, you know, like one of those really big things like an acquisition or a new product launch or, uh, you know, a, a big re- analyst report like this, I would have kind of supplementary content as well, where, you know, maybe I would do an in-depth blog uh, or, you know, maybe a sales guide was, was required to kind of coincide with that. So, that's where you can provide links in your content, in your newsletter to, you know, if you want to learn more, you know, go here and we've got a deep dive blog on this, or, you know, here's the latest sales guide for this particular use case, you know, that uh, takes in, that into account. So, so you're right. I mean, the newsletter, you can't go deep dive into, mm-hmm. into everything, you know, it's meant to be succinct, quick hits, uh, you know, and, and engage. Um, so that's where you can, you know, if you do have some complimentary stuff that you can, uh, wrap around it, you can direct your audience to those. Uh, maybe you don't have them ready yet. Uh, cause maybe it's something that just happened and you, you know, it takes some additional research, but you can still provide insights and just say, you know, um, stay tuned. We're, we're going to publish this later this week and then you can send a link out later. So you can kind of keep that, uh, rolling thunder, if you will, of, of engagement. And, you know, you can link again to it in the subsequent newsletter, too. It's like, remember last week we talked about this? In case you missed it, this was published, uh, you know, on our internal web or, uh, you know, whatever structure you you have for sharing that kind of information. So I want to, I'm going to do a little to to wrap up here because there's so much that you've covered within this digest. I want to pull this thread a little bit about uh, partnering and engaging with execs, but beyond just the digest, do you have any examples or tips for people listening right now that are looking to build a partnership with revenue leadership specifically? What are some of the ways you did that in your career? And what are some of the things they should be thinking about doing to build this partnership with revenue leadership? Because I think that that, if you don't have that, you're already fighting a losing battle and could be, especially in today's market. So, um, I'll, I'll kind of split it up. So on the one hand from revenue leadership, I'm going to put like sales leaders, VPs, or, you know, regional directors and stuff like that. So they tend to be a little bit more on the tactical side where it's like, how does this yeah. help me win deals? And yeah. that's where, you know, you can focus specifically on, you know, this happened, this is the impact, this is how it could affect deals. So maybe it's a new feature from a competitor. It's like, so just so you know, they're going to be able to talk about this now, you know, and here's how we respond. 
you know, and then they can disseminate that that down to it. Uh, you can also look at things like having a regular, you know, kind of like this here, having regular podcasts uh, that the leadership team can listen to or catch up on, uh, you know, where you can, again, share some of this information and, uh, and, and dive into a little bit more detail around the why we care kind of thing. Because especially for the... Uh, uh, for the the sales leaders, uh, the revenue leaders, they they want to know how does this affect deals in flight, you know, deals in the pipeline, and our overall go to market. You know, does this change how we tell our story, you know, or mm -hmm. how our competitors can tell their story? And so that's where that kind of uh, you know, again, it's kind of in the tweaking of how you're delivering that message or how you're telling that story to that group versus, you know, maybe some of the more technical salespeople or the marketing team. So you really have to look at how does this affect that win rate, that bottom line uh, from a revenue perspective. And sometimes it's the same, you know, across those audiences, but you kind of have to keep that in mind. Is like, does this change them winning a deal? Interesting. It's, I, I know it's tired to use a sports cliche, but it's, some, it's like, in some ways, like when you say, do, is this change entirely the story we tell, the story the competitor tells? It's like, oh, we plan on a completely different field now. Or are they throwing a curveball? Are they throwing a slider? Are they throwing something? But we're still like in our active deal right now. This is just something we're going to have to handle. Or are we playing an entirely different sport now? Right. That's, uh, I think that's a really important thing and a huge value add that folks in Compete can provide for revenue leadership, reps in the field everyone that's focused and squeezing every dollar they can out of their pipeline today. And, and something else that you can do is, look, you know, this is part of that partnership is it, as you're building that relationship with those sales leaders, you'll find that they've got their own communications forums as well. You know, maybe a weekly leadership call, you know, or, you know, uh, those regular uh, QBR type meetings. Uh, this is where you can jump in and engage and provide that kind of real time update. It's like, hey, by the way, this happens. Here's how it affects you know, you guys, here's how it affects your deals. Uh, you know, so, so again, looking at, you know, the newsletter is one channel uh, for communicating, but as you're building those relationships, you can start to develop those other channels and really get seats at the table to, to share and enable and communicate with those uh, stakeholders. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, where can folks connect with you, learn more about the consultancy you're working on too? Uh, so you can go to competitivecorner.ca uh, and uh, learn all about our, our services that we provide and uh, and reach out, engage. Uh, you can also hit me up on Twitter always or X, I guess, as we call it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, and, uh, you know, it's at Matt's Style and Hat dot or the at Matt's Style and Hat. So M-A-T-T-S. S T Y L I N hat. And that was a real mouthful. So maybe we can put it <laughs> in the, uh, in the side thing there, but we'll main website, main website, uh, competitive corner.ca. Awesome. Folks reach out to Matt, tell him how much you love the episode, all the tips you're going to use in your upcoming newsletter. And thank you so much. It's been too long. We'll have to get you back on again soon. <laughs> thank you, Matt. No problem, Adam. <laughs> We'll catch everyone next week. <laughs> <laughs>